This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and that over there is the Intel NUC 11 Extreme. So when you hear NUC, you think about cute little guys like this. Well, NUCs come in all sizes. That's really more what you would call a small form factor PC, the Intel NUC 11 Extreme. It's an eight liter case, so it's bigger than their last Extreme edition. And that's a good thing because it leaves room for a full size GPU. We're gonna look at it now. So I've reviewed a lot of NUCs and small fa form factor PCs because they're sort of mobile, aren't they? They're not meant to be used like a laptop. They plug into the wall, into electricity at all times. They're baby desktop computers. So the idea here is, in part, it's just a technological marvel, even if you're never going to buy one of these, that they can get this much expandability and power and ports into such a small form factor. But also for those of you who just don't have a lot of space, a lot of people use these for media centers, for example, or as sort of like a gaming console. And finally, we're getting, getting there with the horsepower that this one's capable of instead of throwing a giant PlayStation 5 that you can't buy anyway. That said, Intel 11th gen CPU inside 65 watt Core i7 and Core i9. They were going to make a Core i5, but most of the interest was at the higher end. So this is a new class of CPU. It's Tiger Lake 11th gen 65 watt. So it's the kind of CPU they develop for all-in-one computers typically here. And so it's more performant than say the mobile workstation laptop CPUs that we see, which are pretty darn performant, but not as strong as a full desktop 125 watt CPU. But they're close enough that in terms of gaming, which is the, obviously with the RGB LEDs and the light up skull and stuff going on here, the target audience is, it's enough horsepower that your games aren't going to suffer and where the GPU really matters more. So this is a baby desktop and you can get it bare bones from Intel, which means no RAM, no SSDs and no operating system. And it's priced from 1150 to 1350, depending on whether you want the Core i7 or the Core i9 model. And you can get it from places like simplynuc.com who sells all of Intel's NUCs and they'll put RAM and SSDs in there on an OS if you wish to do so. But this is sort of like Legos for adults in a way. And I know a lot of you like to buy these, open them up and put your own stuff inside. Side. So it's up to you as to which way you go. If you do, do go with Simply Nux, say you want to get a Core i7 with 16 gigs of RAM, a 512 gig NVMe SSD and Windows 10 Home, it's going to cost you a lot. It's going to be over $1,600. So this is not something you buy to be cost effective, just so you know. When it comes to graphics, if you don't opt for the GPU, which is so hard to get these days, especially if you're looking for RTX 3060, 3070, or 3080, or uh, 3090, <laughs> then you can still use the Intel UHD graphics that's on board here. And, but if you do already have a GPU to put inside, what's neat here compared to the previous generation that required a smaller, basically custom sized GPU, this one can fit anything up to a 12 inch card double slot wide. And the power supply is 650 watts. I mean, that is one compact but strong power supply, and it's 80 plus gold rated. So you can go all the way up to an RTX 3080 Ti here within the power limits of the machine. Huh. Nice. And then you're looking at some really good frame rates in games and maybe even some 4K gaming. Now, Intel supplied the review unit to us with an RTX 3060, so not the strongest in the pack. We're not going to demo 4K gaming on this. Really, the GPU you put in is going to influence the performance the most here. That said, it holds its own for 1080p gaming, no problem, and sometimes even 2K gaming, depending on the test. If you're playing Tomb Raider, for the usual Tomb Raider benchmark, for example, you can hit 80 frames per second on the highest settings, 1080p again. So not too much of a slouch if you can't get a more expensive GPU. So this marks the return of the Intel Compute Unit. If you've followed these NUCs, some of them have had what they call a Compute Unit, which is a pretty clever thing. It's kind of the heart of the computer in a little box inside of a bigger box, and it fits into one of the PCIe slots. So it has the CPU, in this case with the vapor chamber cooler and a fan, to the two RAM slots. You have two DDR4 3200 megahertz RAM slots. You can go anywhere up to 64 gigs of RAM if you want. And it has two NVMe SSD slots, full 2280 M.2 slots that connect directly to the CPU all in this itsy little box, which you can open up and you can see the internals and me doing that, in fact. So the modularity of the compute unit means potential upgradability down the road. In fact, for those who have the old NUC 9 Extreme, you could actually get the compute unit with the Intel 11th gen inside. It's expensive though, $780 to $980, depending on which CPU option you go with, and not everything might work. 
What do I mean by that? Well, the front audio port's not going to work on your NUC9 model anymore. And the PCIe 4.0 support is a little dicey, in part because these NUCs have a baseboard. So the compute unit and the GPU plug into a baseboard, which has the PCIe slots, and also two more M.2 SSD slots that connect to the PCA. So you could have four total. In terms of displays, you could connect three 4K displays to this thing. So we're talking pretty performant here. In terms of the benchmarks that we're showing, first you can see the specs on screen for how our particular unit was configured. We had a Core i9, the RTX 3060, and so on. So it gives you an idea. In terms of thermals on this and noise, man, this thing has some big fans on a lot of them. Just the top section alone has three large fans. So they've done a good job with cooling and with a very open case design. You can see through the mesh on both sides, that sort of thing. Um, you'll hear it. This is a mini desktop, but it's not terribly loud, honestly, considering that. Not louder than any other desktop out there on the block, right? So that's handled well. And the BIOS has quite a few settings for temperature thresholds and things if you want to manage that for yourself. So it's pretty well done. In terms of the CPU temperatures here and the GPU temperatures, the GPU temperatures are fine. There's a, certainly enough ventilation on here and the GPU is right next to the open side with all of the mesh and all that sort of thing. CPU temperatures were typically pretty good too. Nothing thermal throttling for sure. And often in the mid 80s when pushing it fairly hard. Especially with other uses of this for those of you who are doing video editing or 3D Blender kind of work, which is actually less punishing typically than games, I, it would be fine for that sort of thing. And I applaud them for the very good thermal design given the size of this thing. In terms of connectivity, like all NUX, even the most teeny one, like the handheld palm top one that I showed you, there's a lot of ports here. You have six USB-A on the back, two more on the front, a UHS two SD card full-size slot on the front. You've got a headphone jack, you have HDMI 2.0B, two Thunderbolt 4 USB-C, and a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. And we have Wi-Fi 6E on board as well. So connectivity, again, it's pretty astounding given the small size. So it all sounds great. And honestly, it really is. If you're looking for something really small and compact that would be easy enough to pick up, carry to your TV, play some games or media on there, then take it down to the den or whatever it is, the big drawback here is obviously this is expensive, folks. This is not like going to save you money versus buying an MSI or Alienware desktop, is it? I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.